If I told an NBA scout six years ago that this guy would be the best player on a playoff contender, they would probably laugh in my face. The 2018 NBA draft saw 11 point guards taken in two rounds, which saw everything from MVP candidates to second round steals and league washouts, making it the strongest point guard class the NBA has seen since 2009. So six years after the draft, what do the careers look like today for every point guard from the 2018 class and what does the future hold? But first, Guys, it's the last weekend for us to watch football, and I've teamed up with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official partner of the NFL, to give you an offer at a shot at the crown. DraftKings is giving all new customers $200 in bonus bets instantly when they place their first $5 bet on any wager. That's correct, new customers who bet just $5 will get $200 in bonus bets instantly when they download the DraftKings app and sign up using my promo code KANE. All you gotta do is make a prediction to get in on it. You can do that with DraftKings' same game parlays. You can put together multiple bets on games like Super Bowl 58 to give yourself a shot at even bigger winnings. If you're already a DraftKings customer, you can make a bet on Super Bowl 58 and get a bonus bet back in the amount of your initial wager. Max reward varies. And if sports betting is not yet available in your state, you can still join in on the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Sports. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now, new customers use my promo code KANE and bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code KANE only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Originally, the Atlanta Hawks had the number three overall pick, but because former general manager Travis Schlenk held the belief that the more swings you get in the draft lottery, the more chances you have to get a hit, they searched around to find a trade partner and get more draft assets, and they found a team willing to trade with them on the night of the 2018 draft. Atlanta traded the draft rights to Luka Doncic to Dallas in exchange for the draft rights to Trey Young and a protected first round pick the following year, which ended up being used on Cam Reddish. The Mavs have been looking for a savior ever since they blew up their 2011 title team, and with Dirk Nowitzki's retirement around the corner, the Mavs fan base had someone to rally around. At 6'7", 230 pounds, Luka was a jumbo playmaker that manipulated the best defenses in the EuroLeague. Having a combination of skill and size at lead guard, there was a lot of confidence from people that thought Luka could help the Mavs right away. The two biggest criticisms you heard were, he'd struggle to create against more athletic defenders in the USA, and would he ever take care of his body in a way that would match NBA quality. It wasn't just random fans that were unsure of Luka. The three teams that originally had picks 1, 2, and 3 all had the chance to select him and all determined that they would be better off with someone else. Those three teams likely regret those draft picks to this day. In year 1, Doncic ran away with the Rookie of the Year. In year 2, he scored 42 points in his playoff debut. In year 4, he ripped the soul from the city of Phoenix and led Dallas to their first conference finals appearance in over 10 years. And today in year 6, Luka's nearly averaging 35 points and 10 assists, making great NBA defenders look average when playing in one-on-one. -on -one. Even with all of this success, the Mavericks could face the reality of missing the playoffs two seasons in a row if they are unable to win in the play-in tournament. Luka's career is at an interesting spot. Are the Mavs squandering away the prime of Luka like they nearly did with Dirk 15 years ago? With the draft pick they got from Dallas, the Atlanta Hawks used the fifth pick to take the second point guard off the board, a 6'1 sensation from Oklahoma named Trey Young. He averaged 27 points and 9 assists at Oklahoma and had NBA fans that are casual college hoop fans tuning into Oklahoma games to see him make 3 point shots 5 feet behind the line and create shots for his teammates. Trey wasn't Steph Curry, but he saw similar criticisms about his small physical frame that made six teams pass on Steph eight years before. Six years later, Trey's career is at an interesting spot. He's one of the 10 best point guards in the league, if not higher, but it seems he can't get respect from players and coaches around the league. In an anonymous poll of NBA players last season, they voted him as the league's most overrated player. He also wasn't asked to play for Team USA in the World Cup in 2023. There are two sides of the Trey Young debate. 
Either you're someone who says Trey has had to deal with his team getting injured at the wrong time, he's had inferior coaching staffs get fired in the middle of the season, and front office management not putting the right roster around him. He's also played with zero all-star teammates. Or you're mostly out on him because building a contender around a small guard is historically very difficult unless you have a great defense behind him. That puts extra pressure on the front office to make the next move. The question for Trey isn't, is Trey actually good? We know he's good. This is a guy that got brutally snubbed from the All-Star game before getting in as an injury reserve. He's one of the best four or five live dribble playmakers, and he's improved on defense more than we've ever thought. His stock as a player is at its highest it's been since he got Atlanta to the conference finals in 2021. The question is, when he eventually plays with that ideal roster around him, how far can he lead them? It's unfortunate that even though two other teams passed on Luka, Trey is still going to be forever tied to Doncic because of the trade. Instead of trading away the number 8 pick to help LeBron and the Cavs in their 2018 playoff run, Cleveland ended up using that pick to take Colin Sexton, a 6'2 point guard out of Alabama that was at the top of draft lottery boards because of his ability to attack the rim and play with a high motor. He had that hilarious moment of playing a game 3 on 5 when most of his team got in foul trouble. But Colin's time in Cleveland did not go how he thought. Sexton had these expectations as a future building block because he was the guy to follow up LeBron leaving the previous year. He was the archetype of a playstyle some fans didn't like either. The undersized point guard that wasn't a playmaker for his teammates but could put up points in losing efforts. Sexton faced questions about his commitment to winning and how many of his teammates actually liked him. The next season, the Cavs take another point guard in Darius Garland. Garland is a guy who had more passing chops and shooting potential than Sexton. Garland was being looked at as the future point guard, not Sexton. To make things worse, Sexton tears his knee in the last year of his rookie contract, missing the entire season, and then gets sent to Utah in a trade where you weren't sure what was next for him. He's put up more points per game in previous seasons, but in 2024, Colin Sexton has quietly worked in the background and having the best playmaking season of his career, he's affecting the win column more than he ever has in Utah. This is a low pressure spot where he's been able to improve his weaknesses and grow with a team where he's not expected to be the face of a franchise. Just like the Dallas Mavericks did in this draft, the Los Angeles Clippers traded up to get a point guard. They sent two second round picks to the Charlotte Hornets to move up from the 12th pick to the 11th. They used it to select Kentucky freshman Shea Gilgis Alexander. The first thing that stood out to NBA teams was his size for the position. He was measured in at 6'6 with a 6'11 wingspan. Not only could he play the lead guard role, he could also play next to another ball dominant perimeter player. Even though he didn't have this jump off of your screen first step, he played at his own rhythm and would find angles to slide past defenders to score at the rim. But because of his slender frame, unreliable three-point shot, and mediocre blow-by ability on the perimeter, yes, you heard that right, he was seen as a low-end starter at the next level. By year six, SGA is no longer a member of the LA Clippers. He was dealt to the OKC Thunder in the notorious Paul George trade. At this point, Shea has proven for many games that he's not a low-end starter, this is one of the 10 best players in the league. He's an MVP candidate and making some of the best defenses in the league look like some of the worst. Why would the Clippers trade away someone like that? This wasn't a case of an NBA team giving up on a young player before the rest of the league could find out. Even in the post-trade joy of creating a title contender by getting Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, the Clippers didn't feel good about losing out on Gilgis Alexander. Guys like that don't come around often, and people on the Clippers knew this. Big, did, right, did you think he was going to be this good, by the yeah. way? Absolutely. Wow. Really? We were heartbroken when he got traded. Shea broke most people's pre-draft thinking. He went from a projected low-end starter to scoring at similar efficiency levels as Nikola Jokic and Giannis while being nearly a half foot shorter than both of them. The last point guard taken in the first round was Aaron Holiday. He's the younger brother of Drew and Justin making him the third Holiday brother in the NBA. He's a backup on the Houston Rockets right now. As soon as you enter the second round of an NBA draft, you generally get low-end backups, people who wash out of the league after two years, and the occasional draft steal. In this draft, you got all of those things. The Hornets took Devontae Graham. In his second season, he finished eighth in the league in assists per game. 
but today he is on the San Antonio Spurs and rarely sees minutes. Javon Carter was selected by the Memphis Grizzlies. He's been known for his hustle on defense and shooting the pull-up three in transition. He gets spot minutes here and there as a backup in Chicago. These were the last three point guards taken. Eli Akobo, who last played in Phoenix in 2020, Isif Sanan, who never played a minute in Washington, and Tony Carr, who also never played a minute in the NBA. But there was one more player taken in the second round, and he turned out to be one of the biggest draft steals of the past 10 seasons. The Dallas Mavericks had four draft picks in 2018, and with the 33rd pick, they selected a junior point guard out of Villanova named Jalen Brunson. Brunson was a part of two national title teams and in his final year won the Bob Cousy Award as the best point guard in the country. NBA teams like that he could be trusted to set up an offense, score from all three levels of the floor, and use his back-to-basket game as a different way to attack defenses from the perimeter. But there were many questions about his upside at the next level because of his athletic and size limitations. He's listed at 6'2", has a small wingspan, so he wasn't going to be able to guard more than one position. Brunson is also a below-the-rim finisher, and people didn't think he'd be able to consistently score over NBA length. He was also older than most of the players in his class. We've seen NBA teams pass on some players who are 21 and 22 years old because they believe they've already reached their potential. In the year 2024, Jalen Brunson is no longer a Dallas Maverick. Brunson is now the point guard of the New York Knicks, and not only is he one of the NBA's best point guards, but he's the best point guard the Knicks have had in over 40 years. The snowball of Brunson becoming this version of himself started back in 2021 when the Mavericks declined to offer him a four-year, $55 million deal. He was able to hold down the fort for Dallas when Luka Doncic was out due to an injury and helped upset the higher seed Utah Jazz, which included a 41 and 31 point game in the series. Even after all of those games in the playoffs, the $104 million contract he signed in the summer of 2022 with the Knicks got some pushback. That contract is now one of the best value deals in the league. There are over 60 players that have a higher average annual salary than Jalen Brunson, and his salary decreases again next year. Brunson is the unquestioned best player on the most respected Knicks team in years, was selected to his first All-Star team, and is likely going to make an All-NBA team in two months. He is a blueprint for small guards. It is not normal for a guy that's barely over six feet tall to be this good at scoring over NBA length. What's the verdict for these guys? The 2018 NBA Draft is one of the best point guard classes the league has ever seen. Headlined by Luka, Trey Young, SGA, and Jalen Brunson, you have four players who range from All-Stars to MVP candidates. When you compare it to other classes near it, 2018 either wins by a decent margin or completely wipes them out. Not many classes can match it other than 2009 and 1996.